Hey everyone, I spent some time today seeing other ways that I can use Asset Forge to make nice environments. I recorded the process and decided that I would share the three stages I went through in order to develop the map. I'm going to be using the Unreal Engine 4, but you could apply a lot of these principles to other game engines such as Unity. I won't be going through the Asset Forge software itself, as I have already covered that in my Asset Forge first impressions video. I always start with blocking out the environment. The block out is an attempt at building good structure and composition in the world. You're focusing on the bigger details, not the smaller details. I'm never focused on a specific goal or expectation of what it should look like. I'm focusing on exploring the potential of the environment through adding assets in, manipulating them, and also removing assets. By developing it intuitively and by what feels natural to me, I always get good results. There isn't a specific step-by-step -step way to get something looking good in the blockout stage. You just have to enjoy the process and continue to work away with it until you discover something you are happy with. Remember, this process isn't about achieving an outcome, it is about discovering possibilities by asking questions. Once you're happy with your blockout, you can begin adding in the details. So with the blockout stage, as mentioned before, the blockout usually features the biggest assets in the environment and you're developing a composition. When you get into detailing, you're looking into the medium and small assets. Unfortunately, I didn't have many small assets, but I had a bunch of medium assets that I used to create detail. So my main focus this time around was to make the map look really nice through these assets. Another thing you may want to focus on is trying to convince the player that everything fits in place and that you have a consistent theme through your art assets. So if you look around here, I have a kind of castle type area and I'm trying to be as consistent as possible by adding lots of details that can convince the player that this is a castle type area. The last stage for this environment was to go into the lighting and post processing. Personally, my favorite stage. You've worked hard to develop the map and now you can take away the blend look. Post processing and lighting can make your environment look really unique and visually compelling. For this map, I focused on the shadows, light color, and sun shafts when it comes to the lighting. I wanted to make sure that the front of the structures were lit nicely, so I positioned the shadows in a way where they wouldn't affect the front of the buildings. The light color was chosen to have a certain time of day and look for the map. The sun shafts were purely to look nice. I love adding sun shafts into the environments, and if it suits the style you're going for, I find that they really enhance everything. Something I added earlier on was a skylight, as skylights dramatically change the look of your map. It makes the map look significantly nicer, and it removes all those extremely dark areas where shadows and lack of light would have made it impossible to see in. Once you're happy with the lighting, you can jump into the post-processing. Post-processing can enhance the look of your game. It can also be used to create something really unique due to the tone mapping settings. As you can see, I'm messing around with the tone mapping to give the map a certain look. I spend quite a bit of time here. There are no real steps or rules. It's something you get better with over time, and it depends on the look you want to achieve, so I recommend just playing around with the values until you figure out something that you're really happy with. Bloom is great to add if you don't go too overboard, and depth of field can also be a nice effect. The other effect that I used was ambient occlusion. I find that it makes the art assets stand out and makes the scene look better. Just like everything else I've mentioned, you have to tweak the values for the best results. And that's the end of the three steps. Depending on the type of environment I'm working on, I will follow a different pipeline. I found that these steps worked really nice with Asset Forge. All up, it took less than an hour and 30 minutes to develop the art assets, do the block out, detail, and at the post-processing and lighting, so I'm really happy with how it all progressed. Thank you for watching everyone. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe for similar content. I hope you got something valuable from this, and I'll see you all in the next video.